take up a lot of cash because I don't know where the next ATM will be. I don't know which establishments would actually be accepting cards or cash. So that inspired me to actually look at how the technology can be brought here in the Philippines. Now luckily, Fexco is actually based in the rural part of Ireland where we're actually living. So I approached them of the idea and I asked them if we can look at the opportunity here in the Philippines. So it was some, it was both a hard and easy sell because one is we have the population, we have over 100 million population. And then there had been more than 58 million issued debit and prepaid cards. However, there are only 20,000 ATMs nationwide. So what that means is that it's, it's highly concentrated in the urban areas. You go to the remote towns, you're probably not going to be able to access money. Uh, I wouldn't go far. Say, for example, we went to Malis Mal Malapaspa. Just an hour before getting to Malapaspa, the driver had to tell us, you need to get money here in this town, which is an hour away from the port, because you will never be able to access your funds or your money when you get to the island. You know? So, um, in 2016, mm -hmm. we started working with BSP. We, we discussed and asked them what are the regu regulatory roadblocks, if there are any. And uh, they have given us inputs how to develop the solution. Uh, we were able to finally pilot it in 2016 through their supervision. And in 2017, we were able to launch the micro ATM uh, in the Philippines. So that's just the first functionality of PC Debit. What we did is we basically mimicked the experience of an ATM machine, but there is a human intervention. So we will be able to deploy this in the remote area. So from the huge machine, we shrunk it to a calculator size like this. So all you need is this and an app, and you will be able to process any ATM or debit cards issued here in the Philippines. Um, so that's that's how we, we started. And then what we also did is we looked at the infrastructure challenges in the country. So the remote, the more remote you are, probably less likely to have the internet or good internet. So we factored that in. So we made sure that it will work even in 2G and it will work in two bars. Uh, we made sure that on the technical side, uh, the message format is as small as possible. And um, we also tested this technology by deploying it first in Mindanao. We felt like if it's going to work in Mindanao, it will work anywhere, right? So um, right now we even have uh, these this devices as, as far as Tawi Tawi. We just put it in a box and then we sent it over to them. Just download an app and then you pair it with a device and you're up and running. Now, uh, it's very important to us as well that um, we we actually return the funds immediately to the merchants and the establishments. So we settled them the following day. Um, where we are right now is that we, since launch in 2017, we have processed more than 2.5 billion worth of transactions and um, over uh, half a million uh, transactions as well. Now, we also have been able to process more than 100,000 card readers. Um, in the video, for those who were able to see it, uh, that was a partnership with Rural Bank of Rizal. So, usually when the four piece recipients receive their stipend or their allowance, they would need to go to the nearest um, ATM machine, so they would hire a jeepney and they would travel far to get to the town. So what the Rural Bank of Rizal did is they set up they set it up in a gymnasium in Vitali, Sambuanga, and all the of the four piece recipients actually went there. So the they were in two days they were able to process about eight thousand four hundred um, recipients or sorry, eight thousand four hundred transactions for about five thousand four hundred recipients. Uh, so this is what the technology can do for us wherein it will it can make it easy and convenient for for everyone in terms of financial access for the products and services that we have so um i'll open the floor for questions thank you very much uh, linking with the uh, rural banks here in Mindanao because i i know this year mostly in Mindanao yes rural banking so uh how did the experience Uh, so for the 
first question, uh, we uh, we initially started with Cantilan Bank, uh, one of the more progressive, or if not most progressive, rural bank in the country. And um, they approached us in the, during the pilot in 2016, and they launched in 2017, Cantilan. Yes. Uh, they now have over 40 devices deployed uh, in their uh, area because they have 45 branches, I think. Sure. Yeah, in Shargao, in Surigao. Uh, what they also have experienced is that there's really ease and convenience for not just for parties, but they are card holders as well because they are issuing cards. And uh, the, the ATM machine is ideally nice. To have, but the maintenance of putting cash in it, um, especially if there will be any issues when it bugs down, you need to send an engineer to have it fixed. Our device is a plug and play solution, so we send it over via, via courier. If there's any problem, we just re replace the device. It's as simple as that. So there is no need for any of us from from our head office to send somebody in in Mindanao, for example. Um, so they're very happy with, uh, with, with experience. They are continuously deploying it. Uh, they're now looking at how to deploy it in their communities through the touch points, the sari sari stores, the groceries, the supermarkets. Um, so we, we are now at that stage for the rural banks in, in not just in, uh, in Mindanao, it's same for us for Cantilan, uh, Rural Bank of Rizal, and recently we signed with Al Amana Bank. Um, and then for universal banks, yes, there are discussions, ongoing discussions. Uh, this is where we might be launching the agency banking, where they will be providing the credit uh, facilities, the savings facilities. Because currently, uh, we are a financial technology provider. So uh, we can provide this technology for them. So you may not be able to see Easy Debit on the front as a brand. It may be the universal bank. But we will still be working with them and collaborate on the back end. Which rural banks are Well, that uh, well, we we see that there's a lot of untapped potential in Visayas, and and hopefully we'll be able to tap more because currently we only have about have eight percent of the devices here in in Visayas region. Yeah, and and one of the merchants that we have is in Samar, which actually is a poultry and livestock. But they were able to dispense 37 million pesos for since they started in February 2019. They have been consistently earning 11,000 monthly. This is on top of whatever um, revenues that they have with their main businesses. So hopefully we'll be get we'll be able to get the word out. And um, but definitely we would love to work with the rural banks in this island. Miss, how much is the service fees ever for? Well, the, the con we call it convenience fee, and this is market regulated. So we have a flat rate, and then we let the merchants dictate how much it will cost to get to the nearest ATM, and maybe lower it down so that it will be more attractive to the local community. So it depends. Like in, in Manila, if it's urban, you would have 20, 25 pesos. So that would probably be the same as going to... Uh, the nearest uh, ATM, right? But it saves you time, like 30 minutes. Now in Mindanao, there, you would see charges like 50 pesos. In Tawi Tawi, they charge uh, 200 pesos. And the reason for that is because uh, I think it will take you eight hours to get to the nearest bank by boat. So, you know, uh, 200 sound reasonable for everybody and it's acceptable. Now on our side, we, flat, we charge flat rate. So whatever the difference is, Margin. yeah, we, we let the merchants earn from it and let them decide. Because at the end of the day, they would want that their um, cardholders would be coming back to them. What is your flat rate? Sorry? What is your flat rate? Our flat rate is um, 20 pesos, 20, 25 pesos. And per transaction. Yeah, per transaction. And we share that with different parties like the banks, because the banks would also have a share for that. And a payment scheme uh, and different partners. So it's it's not just all us. How do you call it? What that particular fee? It's called convenience fee. So you'll be working closely with SMEs, right? So yes. Uh, yeah. So you're also inviting more SMEs basically to link up with the Easy Debit uh, service. Right? So so far, how many SMEs are you know uh, have been 
with you now. I mean, yeah, 80% 80 are actually Sari Sari stores. Okay. And then we have payment centers, remittance centers, uh, aside from the rural banks. Uh, they just apply online. It's all digital. And then once they have submitted their requirements, which is part of our uh, know your merchant or know your customer, then we send out the box to them and they get it up and running. So how much is the initial investment if you want to be, you know, you want to partner, if an SME wants to partner with you? I believe it's 11500 for the device. Now there are partner banks which are now offering financing schemes. Uh, so they, they can also avail of that. Eleven five, by the way, comes with marketing collaterals as well, okay. um, and uh, I would say probably ninety percent of the merchants who avail of our solution choose the the bundle, which is eleven five, mm -hmm. and it's one soft fee, no recurring fee, no ADB. Yeah. So I think that's very important and attractive to them. Uh, we I recall that we have uh, merchants coming to our office back then saying that they have been rejected by, by the big banks because uh, you know there's their sari sari stores so they're small they wouldn't have any credentials yet so this is where uh, there's an advantage of PC Debit because all you have to do is have your funds ready you can start small because we have merchants which started at 10,000 they wanted to get a feel of it but like right now after one year later they're processing more than a million peso transaction per month so that to us was a testament of not just but the technology but also by the trust that was given to us by the merchants and by the way on this same base right uh, that sim sim card base or no it's not. Yeah, okay. the, the app is going to use the data on the Wi-Fi to okay. dial out to BankNet. So how, um, we're just going to ask about security and how secure is it um, when it comes to, yeah, we're doing you know, uh, financial yeah. transactions. Yeah. So we we are one of the first who have been compliant with the EMV. So the EMV is the chip card, which was, well, we were informed by BSP that we will be launching the EMV. So we kept that in mind when we were developing it. So that was one of the priorities. So we were able to uh, become ENV in uh, June of last year. And then we also comply with the highest standard of card industry. So we are PCI DSS compliant and uh, we follow the EMV standards as I have mentioned. Which uh, if you would go online, we call this the deluxe bundle. Uh, so a merchant could actually purchase a phone, a printer, and a device. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 90% uh, of, uh, of our, our merchants are just purchasing the device. They're already using their existing Android phone, and uh, we have functionality in the app to allow for e-receipts, so they don't necessarily need the printer. So, uh, what will happen uh, when a merchant signs up with Easy Debit is we'll send this uh, via courier in, a, in a, an Easy Debit branded box along with uh, marketing collaterals. Um, the merchant will download the app on their uh, existing Android uh, smartphone mm -hmm. and uh, what they'll do then is they'll pair the, um, the app to the device via Bluetooth. So the, the app or the phone connects to both of these uh, pieces of hardware via Bluetooth. Uh, this is just an encryption device so this is going to encrypt the card information and send it to the phone phone is going to use the data or Wi-Fi to dial out for authorization. So this is the home screen. Okay, so as you can see on here, I've got some options. Cash out, balance inquiry, card payment, and transaction history. Now we also have bills payment on here, but it's grayed out because that functionality hasn't been developed yet. But it's just, uh, I guess, uh, a pointer as to where we're going uh, with the, the added functionality that we'll be bringing to the app uh, in the next uh, number of months. So uh, what, what I can show you is um, what we can do first, I guess, is a balance inquiry, which people typically do prior to a transaction to see how much money they have in the account. So as a merchant, um, I will hand this device to a customer. So if maybe we can have a volunteer from the audience. So it's just, it's just going to prompt you on the screen here what to do. So don't do anything until the screen prompts you. So I'll just hit balance inquiry here. It will establish a Bluetooth connection with the uh, device as you can see and it's asking you to insert the card. So as the merchant, I'm inside the counter, customer's outside the counter, so I'm being prompted on the screen as to the, the, the next step that the customer needs to do. So for example, waiting for cardholder to insert card. So you can go ahead and insert the card. 
So it's, it's all of our transactions are chip and pinned or EMV. Uh, so I'm waiting for customer to accept convenience fee. So as you can see here, there's a zero convenience fee for the uh, balance inquiry. So you can go ahead and hit the check button. Okay, now it's gonna ask the account type. So you're gonna hit number one for savings. Okay, it's gonna recognize the card and it's gonna ask for the pin number. So you can put in any four digits, one, 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 uh, because it's a demo. So you can go ahead and do that. Yep, and hit enter. So obviously in the, in the real environment, you're putting in your own number and, and so on. So what we would be doing now is uh, dialing out to BankNet. BankNet would be contacting Security Bank and coming back with the, uh, with the result. So as you can see on the screen on the device, the balance is displayed. It's not displayed on the merchant phone. Okay, so it's none of my business as to how much he has in the account, all right? So now we know how much you have, or you know how much you have. So we're going to press any button to bring you back to the home screen. So any button on the device, and just take the card out because we're going to be doing a separate transaction. So we're, we're now going to do a withdrawal, okay? So this is cash out. Okay, so again, it's going to establish a connection. It's going to ask you to insert the card. So you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to see here is the convenience fee. So we spoke about this a little earlier. This is set uh, in conjunction with the merchant. So the merchant is going to find out how much it costs to travel to the nearest ATM. It might be uh, 25 pesos each way. He can charge 50 pesos. For this example, it's set at 30 pesos. So you have the option to decline or accept the transaction. You're happy with the 30 pesos, so you accept, you hit enter. So again, there's full transparency there. Uh, again, you select the account type. Go ahead, yep. And the amount you'd like to withdraw. So you can put in 2,000 pesos, for example. Oh, there we go. Yeah, just, uh, I think you're hitting this button instead of the zeros. Just go back here. No, just try again. So it's going to think like an ATM machine, so, so it's going to ask you for uh, multiples of 100, okay? So you can go ahead and hit the enter button, okay? So as you can see, it's asking for the pin, uh, so any four digits. Now you can see the customer is the one driving the transaction. Me as the merchant, I'm just you know, waiting for him to hit the next button, basically. So waiting for the customer to enter the pin, you need to hit enter. Okay, so now it's going to push the transaction back to me as the merchant, all right? So now I know he's looking for 2,000 peso. Now, as the merchant, I now have the option to cancel or approve the transaction. Now, the reason I might cancel is I check my cash drawer. I don't have enough to cover what he's looking for. So the last thing I want to do is approve his transaction and not have enough cash to give him. So I can decline if you're asking more than I have, okay? But obviously for the demo, I have 2,000. So I'm going to approve. So in the live environment, we'd be dialing out to BankNet. Banknet would be contacting Security Bank and debiting in real time. Okay, so I've got a green uh, go signal basically from Banknet. Banknet uh, and the, the app is telling me pay cardholder 2,000 pesos, the debit 2,030 pesos. So it's very clear um, to me as a merchant how much I need to hand over. Okay, so that's basically the transaction. Now we have some receipt options. So I hit this little button on the bottom. I've got the paper receipt. So it's going to spit out a receipt here from the Bluetooth printer. Everybody likes that, I don't know why. So there's always oohs and ahs when that happens. Uh, now we've got the SMS. So this is one that we're pushing in the Philippines. We want the Philippines to go paperless as much as possible. Think a little bit about the environment. Uh, so we're going to hit the, the phone icon here. So it's actually going to prompt you to enter your cell phone number on the device. And I see you have your phone there, so you can go ahead and enter your number. So this is a service that is free for the merchant and the customer, and it's something that we're, we're trying to push here. And hit enter when you're done. So it's going to tell me on the app here that the SMS is uh, being processed. Okay, it's been sent. So if you can check your phone in a, in a second, we should be Hi. seeing, there, it's in already. So there's no reason that a customer would leave an easy debit merchant without a receipt, be it in paper format or be it in digital format. Uh, so that is the, uh, the, the uh, cash out. Uh, we can try payments uh, transaction as well, see because that's just recently live. So again, you're going to remove the card. This is a separate transaction. So this is somebody paying for goods or services, okay? So for example, uh, the, the lovely guys here in Vikings, uh, I want to pay with my card, so my meal is 2,500 pesos. So it's me, me as the merchant, I'm the one putting the price in, okay? Okay, so that's it's my, I'm selling, so I know what the price is, okay? So I'm putting the price in, I'm going to hit done. Now the first thing that's going to happen here 
uh, it's going to show you the price on the device. Now before your card ever go, goes near card reader, it's going to ask you to confirm that you're happy that that's the bill. Okay, so you can say yes, I'm happy that 2.5 is the correct bill, and now you're asked to insert your card. Uh, again, it's going to go through the same uh, process of uh, account type, pin number. So it's very, very intuitive uh, as to how to use it. Yeah, just enter any four digits. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to develop technology that people in the provinces could use uh, without having to, uh, I guess, uh, learn about any new technologies or anything like that. Something that would be very habitually simple to use. So as you can see, transactions approved, really quick, really simple. And that's a payment transaction right there. And again, we have the same receipt options, paper and SMS. Uh, so we can go back and have a look at the transaction history. So this is our in-app reporting tool, which again is very important uh, for, for merchants. So um, there's various different, um, I guess, uh, types of report that I can look at here, be it the day, the week, the year. I can put in date ranges, amount ranges, all sorts of permutations. So if I look at it, I can see the transactions I've done today. Uh, listed on the on the phone and I can email that directly to head office without ever going outside of the app So if my shift ends I can email my my transaction report directly to head office from uh, within the app So again, that's a very nice feature So that's it. So as you can see very very smooth and easy to use for both the merchant and the customer So uh, we spent a lot of time developing this in such a way that we can confidently send this in a box to the remotest part of the Philippines and we expect people to be able to transact within minutes of uh, opening the box and getting up and running. So it's, uh, I guess, uh, it's innovation that people can actually use. I mean, people, companies can come up with very smart uh, ideas, but then when it goes to actually uh, a user experience, it's not quite there. Now, we think we've achieved uh, a, a nice user experience. Okay, guys?